Let's go to our Bibles. Do you all know where to go? I hope. Matthew chapter 13. Uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Verses. Verses. Verses 18 to 23. Matthew chapter 13. Verses 18 to 23. Before we read that, I want to read. Uh, I want someone someone to read uh, 13, chapter 13, verse 1 to 9. And uh, after that, we'll read 18 to 23. Uh, could somebody read verse 1 to 8? On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and mm. by the sea. Mm. And great multitudes were gathered together to him, mm. so that he got into a boat and sat. Yeah. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Mm. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, mm. a sower went out to sow, mm. and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, mm. and the birds came and devoured them. Mm. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, mm. and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Mm. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Mm. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked them. Mm. But others fell on good ground and mm. yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears mm. to hear, let him hear. Come on. Come on. Amen. Now, Jesus is explaining what he said in this parable to his disciples. Let's read verse 18 to 23. Anyone else? Therefore hear the parable of the sower. Mm. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. I want everybody to hear this scripture. This is important for us to understand what I'm going. Okay. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. Mm. But he receives seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Mm. Yet he has no root in himself, but mm. endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Mm. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word mm. and it becomes unfruitful. Mm. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and un understands it, huh. who indeed bears fruit, mm -hmm. producing mm -hmm. some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Amen. All right. My topic today is listening to voices that we get to hear every single day. We all have voices that constantly talk to us without we giving permission to those voices to talk. Agreed? We have all voices, everyday voices. Some voices are we forcing the voice to talk to us. We are rehearsing something. We are remembering something. We allow ourselves to, to process for us to, when we say man cave, man cave doesn't mean they are doing nothing. We are not doing anything. We are processing something when we come out. That process, <laughs> people say, oh, that's a nothing box. Really, there is nothing in the box. And that's not, that doesn't mean that nothing in the box we're thinking about. Something is in the box that we need to think about and make that space clear. You know what I mean? So we're going to something to clear something in the something that's already got stuck. Julie loves to say, if I'm going outside my thoughts, she, she always says, Ravi, I think you should go to your room, think about something and come back. It's good. I like it. I mean, I, 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 I'll take it. I'll never come back after that. I mean, uh, it's so good to be there. <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's, it's fascinating to go into the reason we go there to clear something. To, what, is, what, are we doing? what are we doing when we're clearing? We're talking. We're processing with the, with, the, with, with the language that we know, figuring out why, who, where, what, all these questions is helping me to undo what is making me feel stuck. Our voices within me are helping me to make decisions. 
Amen? It's processing. It's helping me to make decisions so that I would not feel either stuck or confused. Our voices are constantly helping us to bring out someone who we were, who we are not, or who we are supposed, who we, who we, are, who we are, who we are supposed to be. It's emerging us to something. It's taking us to someone. It's putting us into perspective that allows me, when I come back, I'm more peaceful, joyful, grateful, because that what I cannot take decisions is controlling me because it's allowed me to allow me to be stuck in the circumstances that makes me feel controlled. But the voice that we receive is taking me away from that controlled environment to see that I have control over it, not that controlling me. Amen? Amen? The, that I called, David calls, David and Paul calls it, encourage yourself. <laughs> encourage. Put words to your struggle. Put language to your struggle. Put, put perspectives to your struggle. Not perspective. To, when you put some language to your struggle, you're taking perspective from it. You're taking some, some language that creates meaning from it. So you're, when you're, what, I, what I said is, when you're stuck, that's called control. When you come out, that's called perspective. Think with me, please. When you're stuck in something, when you're stuck in situation, Something is controlling you. But when you come out of it, you're getting perspective of, of why I was there, how did I go there, and what should I do to not to go back again? <laughs> Am I going somewhere? So my point is, the point I'm trying to say here is, Jesus has given us the joy of creating perspectives, perspectives, is a GPS for us to not to return. GPS is to escape what's controlling us. Come on. <laughs> I like it already. My point is, what voice that we, God has given us to align to us is helping us to bring in freedom that's something, that's something making us feel fearful of, of not only being controlled, but repeating the same thing again. Come on. The voice that we are listening to, that God put us, put that into it, he somehow sneaks Holy Spirit into it for us to talk and process how we would not go back of fear of not having it, by bringing perspective, you are closing the door and allowing the Holy Spirit to heal it so that it becomes a testimony, not a stumbling block. Amen. I love his sneaky way for, for him to talk to us and find perspectives. What is perspectives? Perspective is a meaning that we derive from things that's not working. Why it's not working? Because it does not have meaning. It does not have, it does not have order. It does not have reality. It does not have logic. It doesn't have pieces together to allow me to see it as a something that I can depend on. I can also call it as Trust. Where there is no meaning, there is no trust. When there is no meaning, what is meaning? Meaning is something that I can trust, something that I can trust so that 
I can feel what? What? Safe. Yes? This is yes in America, right? This is yes in India. Let's do this. Amen? In other words, perspective meaning gives me the joy of trust. Come on, come on, come on. If I don't find meaning in what I'm doing, <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm stuck at things that makes me not only control me, that makes me feel inadequate. Is that a word? Inadequate? Less. Less to something. But meaning doesn't make me less. <laughs> Have you noticed it? When you create a meaning out of something that someone said, something that someone did, <laughs> I see it not as how, how, I see it not defending me. I see it as how can I bring healing rather than control, rather than being controlled by situation. Holy Spirit is always a guy that helps me not get stuck, but he puts me here to heal it and bring that person, bring that reality into a testimony to say, this is what, this is a value, not an obstacle. It's gonna happen again, but we will not be here again. Until we create a meaning out of something, after this situation, God brings it, brings this situation again and again until I create meaning out of it. That's one thing I don't like about God. Have you noticed it? I don't want to give examples. Every single time, every single time I don't have meaning to something, even though I forget it, even though I'm done with it, even though I don't want to deal with it, even though I escape it, even though I squish it, even though I throw to a corner, He'll bring that for the different person, different name, different situation to control me only to say, Ravi, you hit something. Heal what is, what is that hidden by you. I need to hide. You, your responsibility is not to hide. Your responsibility to heal because I have given you authority to heal, not hide. That make sense? <laughs> Meaning helps me Create unity around me. Meaning helps me bring trust within myself and allow the presence of God come wherever I go. Trust produces abundance. Come on. Meaning produces more people to, to be around me. If I don't have meaning, even my dogs don't like to be around me. Why? Because they know I'm grumpy. Even my cats. I love, uh, I went to uh, 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 Ben and Chloe's house. The most amazing animals they care. They love, I love them. I, I, as soon as I'm sitting, in the, I'm sitting uh, on the dining table, I mean, some of you have experienced those cats, uh, you know. Uh, even he healed, the cats heal Hunter. I mean, Hunter hated cats. It seems Hunter loves the cats. I don't know why he's not getting any cat now, uh, Jessica. Come on. Uh, so, so, so I, I, I heard that and I said, I want to see what those cats are. And I soon as sat on my dining table, it, it, it just easily, you know, tailed his thing and went, sat on Ben's lap. I said, that's, that's the cutest thing ever. Oh, Lord, I just bless them. I bless them until it's there. And it's blessed them until it's there. And as soon as I said that, after just a few minutes, I don't know how, where, and what, it's sitting on my lap. Lord, I mean, my point is saying, I love cats until it's not on my lap. Why? It understands. Oh, and the fascinating part is, cats, even cats, even animals know our composure. Is that a word? Come on, that's a good word, composure. Even cats know are put together, are put togetherness. They know how, how this guy is gonna react because 
His facial expressions tells, tells me that I'm invited. Come on. Jesus did the same thing. It's fascinating how Jesus called his disciples before, before they could believe in Jesus. <laughs> it blew my mind. They, he belonged. He made them belong first. Before they could see any miracles, supernaturals happen. They brought, I mean, they go, who is this? Peter, who is this guy? Who, John, who is this guy? Hey, don't worry about it. Just come around. Hey, just come around them. You'll see the presence of God oozing out everywhere, every place. <clears throat> Belonging is a, is a function of creating meaning and, and allowing believing happen. The point I'm trying to say here is, we all have the power to process. Everybody say process. If I don't have the power to process, I'm stuck to an event that allows me to become a victim that psychology call it as trauma. If I don't bring meaning to it, through Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, even though, even though the trauma, even the event is the smallest event you could ever imagine, we can create, we can create trauma out of it because we are not derived a meaning from the Holy Spirit rather than hush it. Hushing will only create Nuisance. But creating meaning will create self-respect. Everybody says self-respect. Self-respect is the foundation for trust. Self-respect. What is self-respect? Depending on a supernatural God that allows you to bring meaning from him is self-respect. Self-respect is not a talent. Self-respect is able to see and find who is your God. When you understand who is your God, you'll understand how to create meaning from it and how to spank things that needs to be spanked so that it does not create trauma. I love it. I love spanking people. The most softest way you can ever get. The most phone calls are amazing. I said, uh, Julie's like, how did you do that, Robbie? I love it. But there is a way that words comes, when it comes from the Holy Spirit, it is accepted. It belonged. <laughs> as soon as it comes from a belonging, what they're stricken to, straight to, is already healed because there is a language of belonging rather than separation. Come on, guys. So the first thing first, how, my point of trying to, trying to say this is, God is giving us some secrets to understand those voices. We talk about Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 to 23, he's explaining, are you ready? He's explaining us what are those voices, what are those voices are trying to help us, trying to either help us connect to victimization or connect to fruitfulness. All these four voices, these, these four things, this four land, these four, four, four things that we can stand on is constantly talking every single day. The first we talk about, I'll make a sense, there are different kinds of voices every day we get to hear, whether you like it or not. Bible, Jesus taught us before psychology found it. Before psychology recognized these voices, Jesus already spoke of voices in chapter 13. 
He, this scripture, this parable is the most powerful parable than any other parable. If you understand, by Jesus said, if you understand this, you'll understand all the parables in Mark. Then I said, okay, 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 what is this? What are you trying to say, Jesus? If it's, this is so important for us, if it is so important for your disciples, why is it important for radical believers? What is that you're trying to teach us to talk to us, what is that you want us to become? What is that I need to derive? What is that meaning that I need to get from this so I can live a radical life? Everybody say radical life. Radical life is man and a woman who is living out of abundance. Come on. It's not, it's not feeling discomfort. Rather, experience freedom in the middle of having nothing, even though. So how do I train myself to be in a place where Jesus comes and retrieve what he has towards us? Where do I stand that Jesus can come? Where does he does not allow himself not to come? There are places that Jesus cannot come. Did you hear that? There are places that Jesus cannot come. There are, there are things that Jesus cannot do. But if I know where Jesus can come, why would I not go there if I want to visit Jesus or not? <laughs> no, no. Life without Jesus is victimization. Life with Jesus is leadership. Everybody say leadership. leadership. Leadership is not leading others. Leadership is leading me against victimization. Leading me against, leading me out of, leading me away from. So that that would be my, that would be my, not be my stronghold. That would be a place that I came out of where, where God can rejoice where I am in so that he sees that sees me where I'm going, I get to see where I'm going because he's already healed from me. So the point I'm trying to say here is, the point I'm trying to say, I, 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 I want to get into the message. The point I'm trying to say is, the, there are four different spaces that Jesus wants, Jesus wants us to know. The first voice that constantly talks to us is, is wayside, wayside, roadside, roadside, the, uh, a place where the seed, the farmer, it feels like accidentally, but the seed is sown, thrown, put into where people walk, people look, how am I saying this? This is the space where familiarity lives. Everybody say familiarity. Familiarity is not wrong. But familiarity, familiarity sometimes misses God, even though we have read that thousand times, a thousand one time God speaks in the familiar world. Ignoring familiar world is ignoring God speaking to us. Uh -huh. Think with me. And I'm coming against this teaching of don't get it to be familiar. It'll kill you. No, it won't kill you. Sometimes he uses the familiar words to help us understand what he's trying to speak. Familiar things that he's trying to bring in so that we, so, uh, so familiar things again and again trying to tell us connect to where I'm going. Familiar Things is nothing but, in psychology, it's called working memory. Working memory. Working memory is a short-lived memory. Where it only remembers four things at a time. For example. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I'm, I'm talking. It's just little, I'll, I'll make sense in a minute. Four things at a time you get to listen. 
you four things that only it lives only for 10 seconds for example it only lives for 10 seconds but but if i catch if i don't understand what has been spoken in 10 seconds i'm letting the seed be taken away by the enemy himself bible says lucifer himself comes down takes the kingdom away from what has been sown what is this something that familiar looks like same thing spoken again and again and again we hate I, my kids don't sometimes they don't like their mom saying the same thing again and again and again they say that mommy how why do you say this again and again my, my little son says, well, if you do what I did, she won't tell you what, what you need to be doing. <laughs> my little son understood that doesn't have to be repeated to him. And my older son says, why do you have to tell me all the time? My son says, look, bro, <laughs> look, look, is he, look, look, at, look at who is she talking to? Is, it, is he talking to someone who has already did it? Or is someone who's already not done it? Come on. When Jesus speaks something repeatedly, he's telling you things that you need to take some notice. Some notice so that God can speak. If you notice beyond 10 seconds, that is what God is trying to say, this is something that's going to protect you. Somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Raise your hand if you are talking to somebody. Am I making sense? If I don't understand beyond 10 seconds of God, if I don't catch the revelation beyond 10 seconds, what I'm missing out, what I'm missing out is power of God to lead me in different space rather than go back to same place that I get stuck without meaning. Come on. Jesus wants me to understand. Bible says understand. He says, he says two, 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 two times he said in this one, one whole story. The first time he says in verse, in verse 13, he says, if you understand if you pull things together, if you bring things together, if you do, if, uh, but the point is, if you do things together, because the thing is, in, in, I think in Jeremiah 35, could you all open that Bible? 35, 17, I believe. Let's see what's there. I think, I think, Jeremiah 35, I think. Jeremiah 35, 17. What does it say? Ooh. Read it. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, the okay. God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on Judah mm. and on all the inhabitants of Jerusalem mm. all the evil that I have determined against them. Okay. Because. No, no, hold on. Because. 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 What? I have spoken to them. They have not heard. I have called them. They have not answered. Whoo! That's a beautiful scripture. Thank you, Lord. I never read that scripture before. It's a good one. I mean, I read it, but I didn't read it this way. Does that make sense? He's calling them. He's talking to them. He's speaking to them. But Israel said, no, 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 no. I can do. I know how to do. <laughs> they didn't need, listen, they didn't need law. They didn't need the law to follow. The law was given to them to see, come on, to see their familiar words called arrogance. They didn't need the law. Once they said, I know, I can do it, <laughs> they got stuck for thousands of years to follow the law. 
if they could have only said, I don't know how to do it, I need help. <laughs> I don't know what Jesus could have done when they said, I don't think I can do it, Lord, help me. Come on, guys. Jesus has been speaking to us constantly, sharing to us constantly, repeatedly. But when I don't hear it, when I don't give time to it, when I don't write down certain things that God speaking to me, let me let me hear, let, uh, let me see what what why I don't hear. I love when people, I love coaching in in, in, in Kroger's in, in marketplaces because uh, one 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 amazing uh, one, one time in Kroger here, I was talking to somebody in the, in the coaching because um, I like coaching, walking around and doing things. Uh, as soon as I was coaching, I see I see this this person. The two, I was in the line, I was uh, trying to do this, and I was talking, and this lady to four, four persons, she says, that's right, sir, that's right, tell him what he's trying to, that is good. <laughs> I mean, even when we went to, uh, went to, uh, went, we went to South Carolina, we were talking to this couple, two couples, and there's one lady sitting right about 10 feet away, do you remember that, Carla? Uh, 10 feet away. She was supposed, her mom is saying, her daughter is saying, let's go, let's go. That lady is clinging to my face. I don't know why she's clinging. I thought I was wrong. She was clinging to my face. Everything I was speaking to her, speaking to them, she's getting, these guys are not getting. Like, she got that 10 seconds. She understood, my goodness, in 10 seconds, if this guy is changing something, I better listen to what he's trying to say because this is changing me. Forget these two people. No, no. If I don't give attention to Jesus in that moment when he says, change this, he's saying, He's saying something that I'm going to give you is more attractive than what you are struck by. Come on, guys. He's speaking. He's knocking. He's sharing. He's telling. What you're going through is not what you want. What you're going through is my invitation, my invitation to do something that will make you a leader, not, not a victim to something that's controlling you. Give me some time. Give me more than 10 seconds, Ravi. Go beyond 10 seconds. I will make you fishers of men. <laughs> Remember last Sunday? If you're around shallow, you'll always live in shallow experience. You'll only get small fishes. That won't fit what you want. It can help you small egos. You're not a kid. You're not a milk drinking babies. <laughs> we got to go stinking deep. We got to go beyond the shallow to say, I'm going to meet my change from where I'm getting stuck with. No, no. It's when Jesus is talking to us, care. <laughs> don't ignore. When I don't ignore, I'm getting good health. Good wife. Good husband. Good realities. Good career. What happened to John when he came back from the encounter? What happened to the job? We all, we, some, uh, as we all know, when John, was well, sorry, Peter, so Peter, when Jesus took him to the encounter, when he came back, did Peter go back to same, same career? 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 Yeah. Did he go back to same career? No, he didn't. Jesus said, dude, Enough is enough. Let's, I'm going to change your career. <laughs> I caught you fish. I gave you revelation. This is for this season. There is more. <laughs> Leave this pattern. Leave this disappointment. Leave this work that you've been doing every single day. You're going to leave it because I showed yourself there. And Peter looked at him and said, Jesus, if you did that there, I know there is more out there. Uh, I'm going to leave my career. <laughs> Jesus is in, this, is in the business called change. Everybody say change. If I'm not changing, I'm not growing. <laughs> I don't like change too. 
but I like change because I'm developing myself into new things. Amen? Did anyone get something now? Should I move forward? Yes? Should I go a little further or should I wait for next week? I think I should do it next week. But, but my point is, this is, the second voice is the amazing voice, uh, which, which the Lord, the, the enemy would talk to us. The first one is, first one is working memory. Why? Well, I, I, I haven't finished yet. Why is it so important for us to, for us to understand, Bible says, if you understand, if you don't understand, if you understand, if you don't understand, the enemy himself will come. Why? Because what is sown is change. Amen? Why? What, what is this kingdom that Jesus is talking about? Ron talked to us one word. Ephesians. Open our Bibles to Ephesians. What's the scripture that? Ephesians? Two? Two. Okay, okay, okay. Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, I get it, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, verse 6, could you read that? Oh, this is so good. Santosh? Verse 6, 2 verse 6, oh, it's right there, okay, good job, Nana. Here's my pastor's son, who's going to be the good pastor, John. Uh, yeah. Okay. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Further. Christ Jesus. Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he says, he says, heavenly places in Christ Jesus, this, that in the ages to come, in the ages to come, anyone can read that? I can't see. Yes. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Yes. In the ages to come, <laughs> in the ages to come. Okay. Verse 6. Are you ready to see your theology change? You want the truth? You want to see some change in the truth? He says, if I am in... Like if the, he says the kingdom, the the so the seed that has been planted, in that working memory, if you don't give time to that working memory, it won't convert to long term memory, where Jesus is going is Jesus building something in the long term. No, I didn't get me. No, oh, guys, how do you understand this? If you don't give time to short-term revelation, you're saying no to long-term. Long-term Jesus. <laughs> the long-term Jesus is giving you ideas that you and your children and the children of children will have work because you started something. For example, I love this crazy entrepreneur sitting here. Crazy entrepreneurs, grand, I mean, crazy, brother, hunter, crazy, yeah, uh, crazy, crazy, I mean, everybody, I have a Paul, crazy, yeah, uh, shiny, crazy, yeah. I mean, this church, I want people, uh, let me go further. My, what I'm trying to say is, it's the idea that goes beyond. The ideas that they get is, um, is fascinating, but when I don't give time to it, and missing out what God has for them in that idea, in that space. So, so, so coming back to what I'm trying to say is, long term is what is necessary. But why is Jesus emphasizing that point of seed that is sown, looks like accidentally or looks like he's constantly repeating something that there. The reason God is repeating something is for us to understand he doesn't want you to sit in the short-term memory. He doesn't want you to sit in the familiar world. He doesn't want to sit on the ground level. He wants to sit on a heavenly places. He wants you to sit 
to judge something that is beneath you. Are you ready? That's what, Paul, that's what Braun said. He said, hey, hey, that's what the Bible says. If you're sitting in the high place, you will know what's within it, what is, what is through it, and what's ab- what is behind it, so that you can make decisions from what is to come, how you can prepare for what is to come, because you're seeing from high grounds. If I don't have, if I don't have heavenly places, I cannot see what's behind me, what's beside me, what's beyond these walls. This, what I'm trying to see from here, will create a family that I need. Come on, guys. What he's trying to say it is heavenly places. Are you ready? Heavenly places is between heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. The heavenly place is not somewhere that, that, that these warriors go there and fight. And fight between new age and old age. I'm just kidding. No, I didn't get it. That's okay. Demons are not sitting there and fighting. Oh, I'm going to fight the, the, uh, uh, Michael. And Michael is saying, I'm going to fight you. It's not, it's not out there. A fight is happening. <laughs> are you ready? This, this midterm, uh, this, uh, what do I say? What is the word I said? This heavenly being, heaven's place, is place where it's not out there. God is saying, are you ready? I was shocked when God, Daddy said it. This heavenly places is not out there. It is in between your, between this earth and heaven. The heavenly place is nothing but your mind. This is your heavenly place. This is where, this is where you make decisions. This is where you control things. This is where God speaks. Bible says, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is not out there. Where is it? Somewhere there? Above me? Within me. No one knows this truth, just so you know. You're the first person listening to third person. Come on. Your heavenly place is right here. It's not out there. If you, de- if you derive heaven here, you will derive heaven around you. If you're not listening, you're controlled. Your feet is a wayside. Is your feet is a working memory. But if you give time beyond your memory, beyond what is already spoken, you would come up immediately to verse 18, to what are that, to verse, uh, verse uh, 27, 27 or 28, 23, it says, you will you'll flourish 20 times, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times of flourishment. Why? You're coming from bottom to the top. This is not on the ground. <laughs> this, is, this is above the earth, below heavens. Above the earth, below heavens. I don't know why people missed it out. I don't know how I missed it. Jesus had to wake me up and tell me, your heavenly place is right here. (laughs) This is where you get to see heaven. This is where you get to see Jesus. This is where you get to see demons also. Not somewhere. (laughs) Next one, next next week, we'll talk about time travel. Uh Uh-huh. Is it real? It's not real. Guys, today, it's not real, just so you know. We'll not go there. Yeah, yeah. Today, I want you to, I want you to think with me, please. Let's go from working memory to heavenly place. What is that stopping me? That's telling me again and again, saying, Ravi, Change it. Ravi, change it. Ravi, change it. I'm saying, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. I know I'll come back. I know I don't want to listen to this. But when I get to say, all right, I'll come to a place you're trying to tell me what. 
what he's trying to give you is your power back to your identity where you get to see what's controlling you is demonic. Mm, yes. Could you all stand? Did I help somebody today? Yes. Amen. I know every week we are, it feels like peeling, peeling the, the lemon or the layers. onion, onion, layers by layers. It'll make us cry. It's okay to cry. You don't know why you're crying. It's okay to cry. Because Holy Spirit is peeling some things that is disconnecting from your feet to heavenly being. <laughs> Who wants to be in heavenly being now? Guys, I love, I love two, 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 two weeks ago, last week actually, I love two people t- telling me, two people telling me, Ravi, I know, I know this Click funnel, not click funnel, flip secret. I know free life funding. I know that the, the two people tell me these guys are, this is the Christian company. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that, sir? It's a Christian company. I mean, they attach both the things. I mean, they said, you can put me anywhere. I love it. Well, they want $20,000 per month, but that's secondary. But they, I love the testimony they come up with saying, this is a Christian company. That's huge. Why? They got, they, though, these guys, these guys, you guys, listened beyond 10 seconds to say, I want to live on a heavenly being. I want to live on a, I want to live where Jesus seats. He says, he says, I'll, I, you will be seated in heavenly places. <laughs> when you're seated with Jesus, you're judging what's controlling you. You take meaning from it and let the enemy become irrelevant to what you're doing. Guys, today, what's controlling you is getting healed, whether you like it or not. You didn't come here because you wanted to come here. You came here because Jesus wants to heal what's controlling you. Let's close your eyes for a minute. If there's anybody here that, that, that you know that has an issue of control, as controlled by some things, they're not going beyond <laughs> 10 seconds. If you know somebody that's there who is... Who is kind of stuck take them take them in your hands even though you're not there every every eyes are closed no one is watching even me except the camera of Jesus if it's you if it's you if if you know that person ask the Lord to redeem them because there's power in the seated place. <laughs> Whether you lo- like it or not, you came out from working memory to long-term memory called Jesus. You have sat in this heavenly place now. You're seated in heavenly places with Jesus, who has grace and kindness, who has faith and power. You're seated right now. You're seated right now. Do you believe you're seated right now? Do you believe you're seated in heavenly places? Yes or no? Are you sure? That's only one voice I get to hear. (laughs) Are you sure you know that you're seated in heavenly places? If you're seated, let's command the enemy not to control anyone who's controlled by anything. Ask, the, ask, 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 use the name of Jesus 
Jesus didn't say, I want you to shine because I'm shining over you. He said, I will let you be the light. You're not a planet. You are an authoritative guy that holds Jesus well. Rise and shine. Command the enemy to no more control anyone going beyond 10 seconds. Jesus, we heal our friends. We heal our family. We bring healing to our, to our children. We, we bring healing to people that we know who are struggling be, can go beyond 10 seconds. Jesus, we come seated in the heavenly place right now. We are seated in the heavenly places right now, God. <laughs> right now you said your heavenly place is our brain, our minds. Jesus, you are there within us. We want to sit with you. Thank you for allowing us to sit with you, Jesus. We command sitting in the seated places that are where you sat already. In our born again experience, you sat already. Jesus, we take, we take our seat. We take our seat as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, with you because you made us, made us your sons. You made us your daughters, Daddy. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to sit beside the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That's you. Jesus, today we're going to live out of testimony. We're going to live out of testimony, God. We're not going to go back to, to, the, to, to the foot level. We will not go back to foot level, God. We will not go back to the experiences that you're repeatedly telling us, telling us, leave, change. We will never go back, God. Help us, God. Help us to sit in that space that you allowed us to sit. That mercy seat in our minds that we made us sit. Thank you, Daddy. For doing what you're doing. We look forward to see change happen within ourselves, within people we trust. We love you, Nana. Thank you for making us seated in heavenly place. What a joy, God. What a joy. What a joy is for us. What a joy is for us to be seated in heavenly place. What a joy, God. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Daddy, for giving us that space within ourselves. We don't have to go, we don't have to go search God anywhere and everywhere. You made space for yourself within me. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy, as we worship you, God.